Amen. If I can ask you to say hello to the person next to you and say, I'm so happy you're here this morning. Amen. I am. Amen. I am so happy. So happy that you're here. Praise God. Amen. I'm so full in the Lord. I'm so joyful and just full in what God is doing in our lives and what God is doing in my life. It is awesome. Amen. And uh, this is the third session that I'm still teaching on the new breed. Um, it's a name, it's a word that the Holy Spirit has given me. Amen. The new breed. You are the new breed. You are the new breed. Amen. Hallelujah. It's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. The word creature is the Greek word Catesis, the Greek word catesis, means an original species, means a brand new product. There are no duplicates. A brand new product fabricated by the manufacturer himself and belong to the manufacturer. Amen. That's you. That's me. Amen. Praise God. Say with me, catesis. One more time, catesis. A new creature. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to, to be thoroughly convinced of your salvation. Once you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, we all need to be 100% thoroughly convinced of our salvation. Whether you feel that or not, it doesn't matter. You be thoroughly convinced that you are saved. You be thoroughly convinced that you are redeemed. You believe in your salvation. You believe in your redemption. It is the work of God. And Jesus said it is finished. It is the work of God and it's finished. It is a done deal. Once you are saved, you are saved not 20%. You are saved not 60%. You are saved 100%. Amen. Believe in your salvation. Believe in your redemption. Believe in the reality of your salvation. That's the reality. That's the reality of it. It doesn't matter what's happening on the outside. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what's happening. You are saved. And lay hold of that deep on the inside of you. There are too many churches, too many preachers that are still preaching on the old man. The man who is sinning. The man who is still living in the natural. The man who still cannot comprehend the things of God. There are too many churches and too many Christians emphasizing what's in the old. The sin. The shame, the guilt, the bad habits. They think about what's wrong. They think about what's bad. They think about what they're lacking. They talk about their lack. They talk about their faults. They talk about their wrongs. They talk about their sin. And that's what they think. That's what they talk. That's how they feel. That's what they confess. And that's what they do. The Bible says, put off the old man. Put on the new man. How do you do that? Put on the new man in your mind. Put on the new man in your mind. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you put on the new man in your mind, in your thoughts. Put on the new man in your emotions, how you feel. How you feel towards yourself, how you feel towards others, how you feel towards a situation. Put on the new man in your deciding faculty, your will, in all your choices. And throw Jesus in your will, and throw Jesus in your soul, in your emotions, in your thoughts. Confess to yourself that you have the mind of Christ. Jesus is enthroned in my mind. I think like Jesus. I have the thoughts of Jesus. I have all my decisions from God. I have all my decisions from Jesus. All the decisions that are not from God, that are not from Jesus, I don't want them. I have nothing to do with them in my life. I have the holy emotions of Jesus. My emotions are true. My emotions are good, profitable, fruitful, 
My emotions benefit myself and benefit the people around me. My emotions benefit me and benefit my family. My emotions benefit all my friends, benefit my church, benefit my community. My emotions are good. That's how you put on the new man, the real you, the you that Jesus had put on the inside. When you have a problem, don't enthrone that problem. When you have a problem, don't enthrone the devil in the middle of your problem. Don't enthrone the devil in the middle of your problem. Enthrone Jesus. Enthrone Jesus. When you have a bad habit, when you're in addiction, when you are in perversity, speak up. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Speak up and say, I'm redeemed. I've been redeemed from addiction. I've been redeemed from bad habits. I've been redeemed from anger. I've been redeemed from jealousy. I've been redeemed from all the curses of the old man. Yes, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, that I am redeemed. What are you doing? You're living by faith. You are releasing the power of God on the inside of you. You are possessing the reality of your redemption. You are possessing the reality of your salvation. You are releasing the fountain on the inside. You confess and you say that you are indeed catesis, a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's the gospel. That's the good news that we believe. That's the good news we start with. Isn't that right? Amen. Hold on to your confession. Hold on to your salvation. Amen. Hold on to your salvation. Hold on to the reality of your salvation. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So who do you think you are? A sinner? Who do you, pra who do you think you are? A sinner who keeps practicing sin? Who do you think you are? Just an ordinary man? Just like anybody in the world, like the, your friends who are not saved? No, because if you do that, you have canceled the cross. You've canceled the work of salvation. You've canceled the work of redemption. So don't think like that. Don't keep belittling yourself. Don't keep living in guilt and sin and condemnation because they work directly against your spirit of faith. You cannot tell the devil to flee from your life if you're not convinced that you are a saint. Because after all, how can a sinner tell the devil to go? So you'll be living a contradictory life in your soul all the time. And no wonder the life cannot be successful. We are not, we are not asked to live a contradictory life. We are asked to live a life that is full on for God. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so, that I am redeemed. Amen. I'm a saint. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm not a sinner. Even though I make mistakes, I correct them. Praise God. I love virtues. I love holiness. I have virtues on the inside of me. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world so I don't partake of the sickness and the disease of this world I don't partake of the calamities and the judgments that come to this world I don't partake of the curses that are in this world I don't partake of the poverty that is in this world I'm separated and called unto God that's who I am that's who I, that's who I am that's what I think that's how I feel that's what I talk that's how I live Amen. And when the demons try to come against you, they see and they feel the reality that comes out of you. Amen. Who you are, the real man, the powerful man, the born again man, the catesis. Amen. The new breed. I want you to know that Jesus valued this new breed very, very much. So much. Go with me to Luke chapter 5, verse 39. 
We talked about this last Sunday. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desires new, for he saith, the old is better. Because we have been conditioned for so long by the world. Your mind was persuaded the world's way of operation is better. Your mind is persuaded the natural way of doing is better which is the way of the intelligence, which is the way of the five senses. And a lot of times we argue our way, we think our way, we operate like a natural man. But I want you to know if you operate like a natural man, you will not receive the voice of the Holy Spirit. For your natural mind is in enmity, that means directly against the Holy Ghost. The mind cannot receive miracles. The mind cannot receive justification. The mind says that you have to earn it. You have to earn God's approval. You have to earn the status of being righteous. You have to earn the status of being holy. The mind says that if it does not come through your five senses, if it does not come through your flesh, you can't have it. But your spirit is humble before God and your spirit take the leap of faith and receive justification your spirit take the leap of faith and receive miracles divine intervention amen the old man wants to insist on living in the natural the intellectual the old the traditional way the old man insists on living a life that is self-conscious, senses-oriented, self-gratifying, self-centered. But your spirit is a lot wiser. Your spirit rise upon the high places of the earth. Your spirit can soar with wings like the eagles. Your spirit can see through every darkness, every obstacle, every hindrance, every problem. Your spirit is ever, ever, ever successful. Your spirit sings, I'll fly away, O oh glory, I'll fly away. We are made to fly. We are not made to walk. How many of us know that when you're in heaven, you won't be toiling and walking? Your steps will be so light and you can just fly. There's no need to drive a car. You can drive one if you want to. <laughs> But you don't have to drive. If you want to go there, you just and you'll be there. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you'll be given the chariots of Ahab. The chariots, not Ahab, the chariots of, um, that took Elijah. The chariots that took Elijah away. You'll be given to drive one of them. How many of you would like to drive them? Come on. Yes, I would love to drive them. Christianity is not a fairy tale. There's a big difference between the realm of the spirit and fairy tale or fantasy. Devils operate in two ways. One is atheism. He tries to cut people off from believing in the realm of the spirit. And he trivializes the things of the spirit into fantasies. And another way is he gets people into the old couch and get them into, yes, spiritual things, but they are the spiritual things of demons, devils. The Holy Spirit tells us that every word, every word in the Bible is yes and amen. And the Bible is full of the miraculous. It's full of signs and wonders and miracles. You cannot afford not to believe in miracles. And in fact, in every prayer, you say you better be believing in miracles. Because you have no faith. Your faith can't be operating. Your faith cannot work if you don't believe in miracles. Because your natural mind will help you to function and to think all the way till you're down there in the mud. But faith is of your spirit. It transcends every natural solution. 
the natural man try to figure out how a miracle can come. Maybe you eat like this, you exercise like this, then the miracle will come. The natural man try to figure out, maybe you pray like this, you confess like this, you serve God like this, then the miracle will come. Maybe you send your children to that school, to that school, to that university, study, and then they will end up in prosperity. That's how the natural mind functions. That's how the world functions. Figure it out. The Bible says that the prosperity of the world has sorrows in it. The prosperity of God, he adds no sorrows to it. And you don't have to figure him out. Our responsibility is not to figure out how God works. Our responsibility is to believe that he works. Can we have an amen? amen. Don't figure out. Just believe. Amen. Jesus said, if you believe, what will happen? You will see the glory of God. How many of us want to see the glory of God in our lives? What do we have to do? Believe. How do we believe? Believe is of your spirit. A natural man cannot believe. So if you order your life in a natural way, you know, this is how I plan my life. I do this ABC and I do that one, two, three. I do this in January. I do that in February. And you just plan with your head. And you don't plan with the Holy Ghost. You have all your life worked out by yourself, with your mind, with your planning. You've reasoned the Holy Ghost out of your life, out of your heart, out of you altogether. How do we get into faith? How do we get into the operation of the Holy Spirit? How? 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 Show me. Lord, show me. Jesus said, believe. The disciples asked him, how do we do the works of God? How can we work the works of God? Jesus said, belief. Belief. Well, I've read the Bible so many times. I've read the Bible so many times. I've read the Bible so many times. I've listened to sermons so many times. What is the key? The presence of the Holy Spirit with you and in you. Pastor Dora, I don't understand why you have to sing that song so many times. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And then the Holy Ghost gave me, oh, 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 you are awesome. Why? Because I'm not just singing a song. I'm in the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is in me. I'm having communion with Him. The song that I sing becomes so real, becomes so real to me. He is awesome, awesome, and He's here in this place. In here, in my life, in every moment, every second of my life. In here, in this church, right now, here, 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 here. The mind tries to put God in the by and by. God worked in Africa. God worked in China. God worked in Asia. What about here? What about now? What about in your life? What about in your household? What about in your situations? What about in your circumstances? What about in your children? What about in your exams? What about in your workplace? He's awesome in this place. This here. And as I sing it, I declare it. As I see it, I declare it. How come the kings in the Old Testament, they had to go to the prophets? Because as the prophet spoke, the power of God was released. As the, as the prophet spoke, 
Remember, they tried to pay Balaam. Come on, Balaam, come. I want you to curse the Israelites. I want you to curse the children of Israel. I paid you. And Balaam said, yeah, good. You know, give me your money. But he got it wrong. Because the power of prophecy does not come from Balaam, the man. The power of prophecy comes from the Almighty God. And he opened his mouth. And the word came. And instead, instead of cursing the Israelites, he blessed them. Do you see the power of words? Words that come by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's like the geezers. It's like the geezers. The Holy Ghost Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit comes and initiates it. And press the button. Zoom, the living water comes out. And the living water brings healing. The living water brings prosperity. The living water brings divine connections. The living water brings everything that you can ever desire for. Can I have an amen? Hallelujah. 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 How come there, there are no Old Testament prophets in the New Testament dispensation? I'm talking about personal prophets. Because each one of us has been called to be our own prophets in our lives. You have been made unto God, what? Kings, priests, and prophets. Can I have an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. God loves us so much. If you look at what God is doing in Abraham, just now I said that Jesus said, No man, having drunk old wine, straightway desires new. What God is saying in that scripture is, uh, How long do you want me to wait, dear? How long are you going to stay operating in the old way? How long are you going to stay operating in the old way? Thinking like the world? Thinking in the old way of your intelligence? Until something bad happens and you cry out to God? Or until your body gets sick and you end in a hospital and God help me? Don't live like that, the Holy Spirit is saying. Don't live like that. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire come on the inside of you and ignite that passion for the kingdom. The kingdom living to come on the inside of you. Ignite that passion for the kingdom living on the inside of you. Live from the inside out and you will not be living from the outside in. For the one who lives from the inside out is the master. The one who lives from the outside in is a slave. And you cannot have two. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and the world. You cannot serve both God and your flesh. And that's why the Holy Spirit has come. To ignite that power, that life, that zoe, that catesis on the inside of you. Hallelujah. I want you to look at what God promised to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22 verse 17 to 18. I was so amazed by the love of God the other day as I was, like, I was just looking for a psalm to praise him. And so I opened my Bible to the book of Psalms. And I went to the first psalm, second psalm, third psalm, fourth, fifth, sixth, until I went to the eighth psalm. Only in the eighth psalm, it, was, it started with praising God. And that showed me, and the Holy Spirit right away, like it showed me, God is not into a self-seeking business. God did not open the Bible with praising himself. God opened the word with showing us his love for us. Don't think that God is in the business of getting everybody to prostrate before him. God is in the business of saving and blessing every one of us. Can we have an amen? God is in the business of saving and blessing every one of us. Well, you say, Pastor Dora, how come you always, always, I remember in the beginning of my ministry when I went somewhere else and they said, how come you're always preaching blessing, blessing, blessing? What else do you want me to preach? 
Curse, 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 curse. No. Jesus had redeemed us from the curse of the law. And when you open the Bible, all that we can see is God's love. Love, 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 love. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Whereas religion tries to magnify, I love God. I love God. I love God. Haven't you read your Bible? It's not that you first love God. It's how God first loved you. Everything that you do is a response to His love. It's an experience of His love. An experience of His love. The song that came to me when I was waiting upon the Lord. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him and all my life is due Him. He plunged me into victory beneath His cleansing flood. He loved me even before I knew Him. How many of us have experienced that? Lift up your hands. You know that God loved you even before you knew Him. And you now try to say how much you love God and you drown out the voice that God loves you. And you focus on how good you are and what you can do. You focus on self-improvement. You focus on religion. You focus on prostrating before God. I mean, I've seen, some, I've seen some Christians when I go out to preach. I've seen Christians come to the front and they just bow and they just bow and they just bow. I've nothing against bowing, but it's better that you hear from God. You can bow all you want. But if bowing takes you away from your God consciousness and put you into your self-consciousness, you better not do it. The key to worship is communion. The key to worship, the key to, to having God in your life is to have years to hear. Ask the Holy Spirit to unclog your years, to take away everything that stops the flow of the voice of God. When you worship, lift up your hands. And hear God on the inside. Live with that inward awareness. Ask yourself, what's happening on the inside of me? It's Jesus enthroned on the inside of me. When I go to the workplace, when I go to uni, when I go to school, wherever I am, it's Jesus on the inside. It's the light on on the inside of me. Am I sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Are my ears open to hear the Holy Ghost? Be very sensitive to your spirit. Be alert and sharp and responsive to the Holy Ghost. Because without the communion of the Holy Spirit, whatever you do will just fail. It's a failure in the sight of God. You try to do it with your flesh. You struggle and you strive. Without the communion, nothing happens without the communion of the Holy Spirit. You'll be left to yourself. I ask God, whatever I do, when I go to my tailor, I ask God. When I go to my hairdresser, I ask God. When I park my car, I ask God. Amen. Whatever I do in my life, big decisions, small decisions. There are no big decisions and small decisions. All decisions are important. And Jesus is called the Lord of our lives. And if you look at what God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, Genesis 22 verse 17 to 18, it's awesome what God promised Abraham. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Listen to me. Highlight this part. Because you have obeyed my voice. Just imagine God looking at Abraham. 
God talking to Abraham. It's like God is so eager to bless him. It's like God is so eager to have somebody that will listen to him and believe in him and obey his voice. Abraham is nobody special. He's just like you and me. In fact, he, you know, he made a mistake. He almost missed it. So God is not looking for somebody spectacular. He's not looking for somebody with 200 IQ. He's not looking for somebody with 200 EQ. No, he's just looking for somebody that will listen to his voice and believe and obey gladly, not religiously. Well, you ask me, Pastor Dora, how do I hear the voice of God? That's the key. I'm so glad that you ask. How do I hear the voice of God? That's all that we need. If you ask me out of the whole Bible, what's the one thing that I need? To hear the voice of God. God wants so much to bless Abraham. He said, I'll make you big, I'll make you great, and kings will come out of you. A lot of Christians, they believe in being poor. They believe that God wants you poor. They believe that the poorer you are, the more spiritual you are. And well, if you looked at the Bible, you look at all the Bible, you, you know, if God wants me to be poor, I'll be poor, no problem, because eternity is a lot more important than what's on earth. So, where do you find the will of God? In the Bible. Let me ask you, who is that one person who is very poor, whose name is mentioned by Jesus? Who? Come on, somebody tell me. Who is that? Lazarus. He's so poor, he has to back. He's only the only person who is named, mentioned by Jesus. Whereas, if you look at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Solomon, David, Esther, Mordecai, they were all rich. Mordecai was poor to begin with, Esther was poor to begin with, but the key is when you know God, you won't be poor for long. When you know God, you won't be poor for long. Why? Because the one who made all the heavens and the earth, who had all the wisdom, lives on the inside of you. Do you believe in that? Do you believe in that? Yes, I do. If you believe in poverty, that's what you have. And poverty is a spirit. There is a sting to it. There is a smell to it. The spirit of poverty caused you to be in fear. You are so afraid of losing. You are afraid of losing what you have. You are so afraid of not earning enough. You're so afraid of emptying your account. You budget and you plan. And you cannot afford to think big. You cannot afford to think great. Why? Because you've limited yourself. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And poverty brings bondage and limitations. So God said to Abraham, I will bless you. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. Why is it I-N-G? Why is it continuous tense? Because the blessing of God is continual from one generation to the next. One generation to the next. The blessings of God, it maketh rich and has no sorrows in it. Amen. And if you look at um, I want you to look at um, Genesis chapter 23. No, not 23. Genesis 21. Genesis 21 verse 1 to 6. Genesis 21 verse 1 to 6. Oh, sorry, not Genesis. Psalm 21. Psalm 21 verse 1 to 6. Psalm 21. Now I want you to look at the reality of God. Christianity is reality, not a religion, not fantasy. Christianity is reality and you will never be able to activate the power of the Holy Spirit in your life if you don't see it as reality. 
Religion is away from you. It's out there. You always need to get to it. Get to it. Let me always get to God. Let me always get to holiness. Let me get to acceptance. The Bible says you are already accepted in the beloved. How, about, how many of you have heard of in Christ? Come on. How many of you have heard of in Christ? What does that mean? What does that mean in Christ? What is in Christ? Christ is not referring to Jesus. The name Jesus refers to Jesus, the person. Jesus, the person, our Savior. God who came as a person, Jesus. Christ is the anointing that came on Jesus because Jesus emptied himself of his Godhead. He came as a man conceived of the Holy Spirit, anointed of the Holy Ghost. And the anointing came on him and dressed him. That's why the word of God says, put on Christ. Put on Christ. Christians, we are to put on Christ. Or you can call it, put on the new man. So what is Christ? Christ is a place. Christ is a place. Christ is a place. It's a spiritual place where the Christians should stay. Where the Christians should stay. And very sad, too many Christians, they hop in and out, in and out of the Christ, the secret place. And they hop in and out. When they go to work, they are not in that Christ place anymore. They are out operating in the world. Whereas we are called to be in Christ, abide in Him, abide in the place of the Most High, Apply, abide in the place of our new creation, abide in the place of Catesis, the new creature. Don't ever leave that place. Whether you're on holiday, whether you've made a mistake, even when you have sinned, when you have sinned, that's the most important time that you don't leave that in Christ. Don't leave that in Christ place, even when you sin. Because when you sin, that's when the devil is working hard to tear you off like a lion. The Bible says to tear off your soul like a lion. He's working hard to tear off your soul with condemnation, accusation, seduction, temptation. How many of us have found out that the very same devil that tempts people is the very same devil that will accuse them? How many of you know that? Lift up your hands. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Live out of that in Christ. And if you look at Psalm, David, he said in Psalm, the Holy Spirit said in Psalm 21 verse 1, The king shall joy in your strength, O Lord, and in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withholden the request of his lips. Selah. How many of us know that David is not perfect? How many of us know that King David is not perfect? Lift up your hands. He's not perfect. How many of us know that Abraham is not perfect? How come they are listed as one of the great people in the kingdom? Abraham was listed as one of the great shots in the kingdom. David was listed as one of the big shots in the kingdom. Why? It's because they believe in their salvation. They believe that they have been chosen of God. They believe in their calling in God. They, their belief in God is a lot bigger than their belief in themselves. Their belief in God is a lot bigger than their belief in themselves, either good or bad. They lose sight of themselves in the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. I mean, look at these scriptures and see it. See it. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withholden the request of his lips. How many 
many of you would like to have that from God? Lift up your hands. Can you? Come on, answer me. Can you? Can you? Can you? Hallelujah. Yes. When you pray, what did Jesus say? Believe that you receive and you shall have. Woo. Hallelujah. He has not withholding the request of your lips. When you pray, believe that you receive and you will have. What pleases God? Is it your hard work? Is it your religiosity? What pleases God? What is it? Your faith. Because God wants you, God wants you blessed much more than you want to be blessed. Can we have an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to Romans chapter 2 verse 11. Romans chapter 2 verse 11. God wants us to respond to his goodness. Not to respond to his punishment. Amen. The Holy Spirit does not threaten you. A lot of times we project, we project our own thinking to God. Without digging into the Bible, you will project God and you come up with a God who is like you. <laughs> I'm so happy you, you are so happy that God is not like us. <laughs> Only one. How many of you are happy that God is not like you? Lift up your hands. <laughs> you know, what do we do? We threaten, we intimidate to get our ways, right? How many of you have caught yourself shouting at your kids? Come on. <laughs> How many of you have caught yourself shouting at each other? Come on. <laughs> so happy that God is not like us. Amen. God does not intimidate. God does not threaten. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that you can offend God? Lift up your hands. Good. You can't offend God. His love is a lot bigger than you. Nobody can offend God. Amen. Don't even think that you can offend Him. You can't. Amen. God does not intimidate. God does not threaten. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is awesome. Look at Romans chapter 2 verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. That means what God did for Abraham, he will do for you. What God did for David, he will do for you. What God did for Solomon, he will do for you. All you need to do is to find out the key. The key. The key. What is the key? The key is what releases the blessing. The woman with the issue of blood. Is it a fairy tale? Is it a fairy tale? Is it that only that woman with the issue of blood can receive healing? Only she can. That's all. And they deify that woman and call her a saint. Jesus did not come to be put into a class all by himself. That's the work of religion. If Jesus wanted to be put into a class all by himself, he would not even come as a man. The reason why Jesus came, emptied himself of his Godhead. He's the second person of the Trinity. He emptied himself of his Godhead. He came to be one of us. He didn't even think of it as a condescension. Why? Because our God thinks in terms of love, 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 love. How many dads and mothers here, when you bless your kids, you think of condescension? No. We have to watch the way we think and uh, the way that we talk. A lot of words are very religious. And what's wrong with religious spirits is that they take you away from the blessings of God. They take you away from the reality of God. And put you in a religion. So you have Jesus in a class all by himself. He's up there and I'm down here. And he's always judging me. He's incomprehensible. He's inaccessible. That's far from the truth. The reason why Jesus came is so that he can be with us. And the reason why the Holy Spirit has come is so that he can be on the inside of us. You know, the human definition of success is if I can achieve a lot. If I can have a lot of people. If I can have a lot of money. If I can achieve a lot. You know, what is God's definition of success? 
God's definition of success is to make somebody successful. That's what the Holy Ghost said to me. God's definition of success is to make somebody successful. If you want to be successful like that, lift up your hands right now. Father, we thank you and praise you. We want to be successful in your definition. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. There is no respect of persons with God. In fact, Jesus said that if you believe in him, he said, greater works will you do. It's incomprehensible. What? We can do greater works in Jesus? Not greater in quality, but greater in number. Because Jesus has multiplied himself. There are many, many Jesus all over the world now. Jesus is just a Hebrew name. The Hebrew form is Joshua. Jesus has multiplied himself in you. And that's why, that's why you need to be Christ inside minded. When you look at yourself, don't just look at your belly. When you look at yourself, see your spirit, the spirit man on the inside. I'm not just Dora on the inside. There's a Dora on the inside. There is, I'm not just Dora on the, on the outside. There's a Dora on the inside of me. Amen. There's a Dora on the inside of me. Amen. There is Christ on the inside of you. The catesis. The glory within. The treasure on the inside. In uh, our church in China, there is a well right there within the, the premise. There's a well there, and they put a lid to it. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There is a well on the inside of you, a well, a well, and release the water from the inside of you. Release the water. Let it spring forth from the inside of you. Don't just live by your brain. Don't just live by your five physical senses. Don't just live conditioned by what's on the outside. Live by the power, the energy, the light, the glory from the inside of you. That's why Jesus said, do not leave until, do not leave Jerusalem until you be baptized and dueled with power from on high. The power that will shoot up from your spirit. Can we have an amen? When the power shoots up from your spirit, you have a different language. You are a different person. You have a different nature. You have a different language. On the inside of you. Amen. Why did God go all the way to bless Abraham? To bless David? To bless Esther. Why does God go all the way? Why did God all go all the way to separate the Israelites from the Egyptians? Why did God go all the way to deliver the Israelites from Egypt? Because this people is very, very precious to him. This people is very, very precious to God. Amen. This breed, this breed, the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Abrahamic people, they are very special. This godly line starting from Noah is very, very special to God. And God has gone all the way to protect them. God has gone all the way to preserve them. God has gone all the way to mark them. God has gone all the way to prosper them. Why? 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 Because God is looking forward to this spiritual people birthed of the Holy Ghost and this spiritual people is you and me a people born of the word born of the truth born of the Holy Spirit a people baptized in the Holy Ghost can we have an amen hallelujah give the Lord a big hand thank you Jesus hallelujah you know, when you are in communion with the Holy Spirit, when the Word of God, the revelation is being preached to you, there is a fire. How many of you feel that something is happening on the inside of you? There is something happening on the inside of you. There is an ignition. There is a, an explosion on the inside of you. 
And don't think that your life ends when you leave this planet. Whether it's 80 year old, 120 year old, no, your life doesn't end. You will continue, that glory will still continue all the way. We have a glorious future ahead of us. Excellent, glorious future. Amen, wonderful. Can I ask you to go to Ezekiel chapter 11? You know the high priest, they have to wear, they have to wear the breastplate with what? The 12 gemstones. God finds his people so precious. He had the high priest to wear the 12 gemstones on his breastplate all the time. Can, can you say it together with me? God loves me more than I love myself. Say with me, I'm very precious. I'm awesome. I'm in the heart of God. I'm the apple of his eye. I'm the lover of his soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. This is the prophecy given to Ezekiel. I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. I want you to highlight a new spirit within you. I want you to be from now on to open, to open up the spirit that is within you. Live sensitive to the voice of God on the inside of you. Once you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit talks to you in your heart, in your conscience. The Holy Spirit talks to you. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. So if you be his sheep, you will hear his voice. But if you walk away from the sheep pen and you live a life that is self-willed, self-oriented, then the, the channel is blocked. Your ears become clocked. What does a sheep do? A sheep listens to the shepherd. Why? In order to eat, in order to drink. All your prosperity is dependent on God. All your prosperity, spirit, soul and body, is dependent on God. What's the point of gaining the whole world and lose your soul? What's the point of being very rich and get sick at the end of your life? and lose all your kids to the world. No, you are wiser than that. Have that continual prosperity down the generations, all the way to eternity and down the generations to come. When God is for me, money comes. When God is with me, open doors comes. When God is with me, divine connections come. When God is with me, I'm, big, I'm so attractive that all the silver and gold is attracted to me. All the good people are attracted to me. Open doors and favors, opportunities attracted to me. And the devil repels me. Hallelujah. Health and healing attracted to me. All the forces of life attracted to me. When Barnabas was calling out Son of David, have mercy on me. The people tried to shut him up, but the heart of Jesus was attracted to him. And Jesus said, bring me Barnabas. Bring that man to me. Amen. Remember, there were two women, Mary and Martha. Martha was so busy with the things of this life. And Mary chose the best place in the voice of God. And Jesus said, because she has chosen that place, no one can take that away from her. Jesus said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. God's way of being and doing right. Hunger and thirst. I want you to know you're looking at a very blessed woman. Ever since the first moment I got born again, I became so hungry for God. I'm still hungry for God. Can't get enough. Amen. Open your, 
open your heart, lift up your hands and ask God to give you a powerful spiritual appetite. Amen. He's always giving. So expand your capacity to receive. Amen. Ask the Lord right now. Lord, give me, give me a great spiritual appetite. Expand my capacity. Increase my receptivity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Amplified Bible says, sensitive and responsive to the touch of their God. The Living Bible says, be tender and responsive in your heart. The Message Bible says, red-blooded, firm-muscled heart. Amen. You want a miracle from God? Let you be alive on the inside. Amen. I have to finish this morning. Alive on the inside. Let your spirit come alive to God. Awake, awake to God. Awake to God. Oh, yes, Lord. I'll finish with this scripture, which um, the Lord gave me. It's so awesome. Go to Isaiah 29 verse Isaiah 26 verse 9 in the King James. Isaiah 26 verse 9. Isaiah 26 verse 9. With my soul have I decided you in the night. Yes, with my spirit within me will I seek you early. Let your soul desire God. And let your spirit... Isaiah, in the Old Testament, his spirit had to seek. But we are in the New Testament. Our spirit is already, what? One with the Holy Spirit. And uh, the message translation put it this way. Through the night my soul longs for you. Deep within me, my spirit reaches out to you. This is for the New Testament saints. My spirit reaches out to you to you my soul hungers for you my spirit reaches out to you amen thank you jesus thank you jesus every eye closed every head bowed